I don't know who you are or where you come from, but you're going to pay for this, I promise you. Answer me immediately, or I personally will fire the photons that will destroy you. Arm the photons. The photon launcher is I right. know. I knew all about these controls before I ever came on board. Tell me when we're in torpedo range. Of the myriad of villains that exist throughout the Trek universe, whether you are breaking down the original series or analyzing the most recent Trek episodes, one of the most well-known malefactors that has had great impact on everything is, of course, Goldicott. However, it is increasingly surprising to me that people within the Trekdom have become so judgmental that they will not only say that Goldicott is bad, but that you're bad if you like him, or even if you agree with some of his actions. Let's just get into it. How do you begin to see, Commander? that without any help from either one of us, they've managed to start their own little war out here. One of the skills that is becoming rarer and rarer in our society at large is the ability to understand where a person comes from and what they experienced, but not condone some of their actions. A lot of people, even some viewing this right now, don't seem to appreciate someone's point of view if they grew up differently. Again, not condoning, but at least understanding. Luckily, I don't hold this insanely unreasonable flaw. We know that Dukat, whose first name is never confirmed in canon as far as I can tell, and also has somewhat an ambiguous birth date, was probably born in 2308 or 2309. This would put him in his 50s or 60s when Deep Space Nine occurs. Even if we can't take this information as canon, it isn't unreasonable to think that the man would be late 40s or into his 50s based on his actions and even more based on his dialogue. Based on that age, and again some of the things that he said, we then know that he probably grew up during the great times of strife that Cardassia saw. I'm six years old and living on the streets of Lacat. There was a band of children, four, five, six years old, some even smaller, desperately trying to survive. We were thin, scrawny little animals, constantly hungry, always cold. We slept together in doorways like packs of wild gettles for war. From episodes in The Next Generation, we can learn that Cardassia was pretty destitute during his childhood, that the civilian government had failed or was failing. Kids were starving on the street, there was no work, and the entire culture suffered. And from this, he would have seen the rise of the military and how they took charge, how they would begin to be able to feed the people. Cardassian schools likely taught him how expansionist policies a near authoritarian leadership would ensure that no Cardassian ever went hungry, how it saved them. He'd also be taught, as a lot of us are today, that it was Cardassia that should be upheld. The idea of Cardassia, the place. He would be given a sense of nationalistic pride. And if a few species outside of Cardassians had to suffer so that the entirety of the Cardassian people could be taken care of, well, what was that old Vulcan adage? The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few? Whether by requirement or a sense of pride, Dukat would join the military and learn how things were really handled. The education that he got within the military itself would push why non-Cardassians had to suffer so that everyone else is happier. Looking at the man himself, if we are to believe him, perhaps he wasn't the worst Cardassian out there. There were quite a few others who would hurt people just to hurt them, arguably tried to do his best to make the arrangement peaceful. If the Bajorans killed a Cardassian, he would only kill one Bajoran, a life for a life. He'd never attack unless provoked, and he made the slave conditions as bearable as they could be. And then, when the Cardassians retreated from Bajor, Dukat returned to assist others when they needed it. He was a man who loved his daughter, and when Cardassia was under threat, he did what every other Cardassia couldn't or wouldn't, and attacked the Klingons, even when the government told him not to. This only after he had selflessly saved them, these democratically elected people from the Datapa Council. And when the Federation did nothing, when the Klingons were destroying everything that he held dear, when the Maquis were conquering system after system, he made the hard choice. He joined the Dominion to give Cardassia back its sovereignty. Give it back its honor. The only thing that Dukat couldn't do, the one man that he would never be able to defeat, was Ira Stephen Bear. It would be Ira's hatred that the audience was sympathizing with him that would ultimately be his downfall. And it was Ira, in the episode Waltz, that we saw Dukat truly die. But again, before that, if we believe Dukat's words, 
then that was his past, his history. He worked within the system to try to make it suitable and livable for everyone. If everyone had accepted their place in the universe, he would give them as optimal conditions as he could. He was a murderer, someone who would assault women, helped commit horrible acts, but for a Cardassian, he wasn't all that bad. If we don't believe Dukat, then he was a man who was one of the most charismatic characters in all of Trek. Again, a murderer, someone who took women against their will, someone that would devastate the world of Bajor and others, and he still made it seem like he was the best of the worst, that he actually cared about them, that he would join the right side at the right times. And ultimately, he was trying to fight for the good guys, whoever they were at that time. He was manipulative, and he was effective. He was so charming that ever so often, even Kira, Kira would forget who he really was. In my opinion, based on the episodes we see, it's probably somewhere in the middle with Dukat being pretty villainous and just charismatic. The man was abominable, and no one should ever strive to do the evil things he did in real life, nor even condone them. But you have to admire someone who could do all that and somehow still make it seem like he was just someone who was caught in a bad situation. Kind of like a certain tailor. A certain tailor that everyone wishes had fucked Bashir. I guess it's okay for Nazis to screw doctors, but not for them to be military personnel. And at the end of the day, even our best heroes would lie. They'd cheat. They'd bribe men to cover the crimes of other men. They were accessories to murder. And even they could live with it.